Hi everybody, Adam here. Welcome back to our Lego room. Today we're going to be kicking off a new video series on sorting and specifically today we're going to look at some useful equipment as well as some tips and tricks to follow when sorting and I'm also going to do some actual sorting of Lego Technic parts that I'm parting out of sets that I have and we'll probably toss in a few other tips and tricks along the way. So uh, let's get started. So first off, you'll notice that we've actually started to do some of the sorting already. And what I'm using at the moment are the drawers from the Acro Mills storage containers. Really useful uh, containers when you're doing some initial sorting of parts. Uh, you know, they're very small profile in the space they take up. And, you know, if you haven't sorted some of these parts before, you can then potentially just slot these drawers back into your Acro Mills uh, containers. So I'm doing a lot of sorting in these at the moment. Another uh, great container that I like to use when doing sorting like this is the drawers or uh, containers that come at the top of the Latchmate storage containers. We did a video on this, uh, the storage container, so you can check that out on the, the channel. But, you know, a really great, uh, really great container. It's got some nice compartments and areas that you can put groups of parts in uh, to keep them separate from everything else. So, you know, between the Acro Mills uh, drawers and these, you know, I like to use them for a lot of my sorting. Uh, but I also just do stuff piles out on the table as well, depending on what I'm working on. So, as I mentioned, we're doing some parting out of Lego Technic parts today. So, we'll uh, grab a couple bags here and open these up. Now, I like to, whenever I'm doing sorting, I like to have a bit of a, you know, an open table space to work on. So, a nice little area where you can have a pile of parts that you can start to move around. And, you know, at the moment I'm using this section of our Lego table, uh, but, you know, sometimes you use the dining room table. Uh, you know, we've got some other tables in our Lego room that are useful to use for this. So anything that'll get you a wide open surface that you can fill with containers and parts uh, is really useful. And all the parts out there. So parting out of sets is, in my opinion, some of the easier sorting that you uh, that you can do because you're dealing with a smaller subset of parts, uh, which makes it a lot easier to kind of group things together and uh, you know get everything kind of quickly quickly organized out into piles. Whereas when you're like dealing with a, you know, a bulk bin of Lego, you can have like a lot of things where it's just one of a part um, or, you know, you could have literally hundreds and hundreds of different parts that are completely unrelated from each other. Um, you know, and there's pros and cons to each, but at the moment, you know, uh, I'm dealing with a couple of sets that I wanted to part out. Uh, that I didn't want to build. I just want to use these parts for potentially some GBC modules or, uh, you know, in some other, uh, some train builds and other things like that. So, um, I am going and doing this at the moment. So let's, uh, I'm going to fast forward through to the, uh, to the end of this, this initial bag sort. So now that we're done sorting out those two bags, we're left with nine piles of parts here. And as I mentioned, you know, when you're dealing with bags of parts like this, quite often you're going to end up with a relatively small number of part piles and, you know, a lot of pieces in those piles, especially when you're dealing with Technic pieces. Uh, sometimes that's not going to be the case in older sets where, you know, there was 
uh, fewer bags or in some of the the system sets where you can end up with still a wide variety of parts but uh, you know in this particular instance a relatively small number of piles here and the next step is to go and take all of these parts and put them into uh, Acro Mills drawers. A number of them already have you know, drawers on the go already, so that makes it easy. Uh, but we'll get all these in and then we'll proceed to the next step. So one thing you might notice is for some of the parts that I was sorting out, I already had existing drawers for them. So you might ask, well, Adam, why don't you just put them directly into the drawer as you are sorting them out on the table? And the reason I don't do that, I mean, you could definitely do that, but the reason I don't is because I'm looking for kind of economy of movement and I want to try to do as small a movements with my hands and arms as I can when I'm sorting all the parts out to maximize how quickly I can get everything sorted. And if I had to like look around like, oh, where was the part bin for this one? Oh, I got to lift the, the part across the table over here to where it is. Uh, you just end up making a lot more movements and using a lot more time than you necessarily have to. Um, so especially in instances like this where I'm dealing with a, a relatively uh, contained number of pieces or types of pieces, uh, I like to do it all out on the, the table there and then move them from those piles into the appropriate drawers um, so that I can kind of maximize how quickly I can get everything done. Now, not everything uh, goes into drawers like this and not everything will go up onto our uh, Acro Mills storage wall. Now, if you have not followed along with our video series on Lego storage, highly recommend going and checking that out. We've done a lot of great things there talking about the Acro Mills containers and other awesome containers that we are using for storing our Lego collection. Uh, but you know, not everything, like I said, goes up there. Uh, you know, some parts are too big. Some parts have, uh, you know, just too much quantity to fit nicely up on the wall. And so what we do in that case is we use uh, plastic bags. And you know, an example here would be these, uh, these wheel parts here. Uh, rims it uh, they're not going to be they're not going to fit very well into an acro mills drawer and so what I like to do is put them into uh, a plastic bag and then we have then we have a plastic uh, a set of plastic containers that we're using as kind of overflow so you'll see You'll see here, I've got this latch mate container, uh, which already has a bunch of plastic bags in it, but we are taking parts that are either overflow or just oversized, and we're putting them into, into these containers. And my goal with these containers, we've talked about this a bit more in some other videos, but my goal with these is to have them under the appropriate section in the Acro Mills uh, wall um, as the parts, the related parts would be. And then on the, on the front of the container here, we'll have labels printed with all the different types of parts that are in this particular uh, container. So it's easy to find stuff in that overflow, oversized uh, storage area. So. You know, that's just another way to to deal with parts as you're sorting them out, um, which can be can be quite useful. So now let's dive into opening up another set of Technic parts for sorting.
So now these ones are fairly oversized pieces. They're not going to be, you know, they're not too hard to actually sort out here. Now, one question that usually comes up when people talk about sorting is, should you differentiate between the uh, same part, different color? And I'm kind of on the fence with that. There's different situations where I will sort by color, but I don't think I'm, I don't think I ultimately have enough storage area to do everything by color. So I'm trying to, you know, I'm just trying to kind of watch and see where it makes sense. Uh, for some of my bricks, like for example, two by four bricks, I have them all sorted out by color. And, you know, I just feel like, especially for some of those ones that I have in larger quantities, that's going to make it a lot easier to find the parts that I want and need in a given, uh, a given moment and situation. But I think when it comes to a part like this, uh, the advan you know, the advantages at the moment of having the whites separate from the, the gray versions, uh, just isn't enough to justify the the storage space so I can see myself putting the the white and the gray ones together in the same uh, the same area but you know it really just depends on how you work with the bricks and how you uh, how much storage space that you have because um, if you've got tons and tons of space you know it's great to have everything all parted out um, by color and by part, uh, it just makes things so much easier to, um, to find when you go looking for something very specific. Uh, but like I said, in my case, not all, not all parts, you know, are going to be super important to have done out by color. And especially, you know, in a baggie of, you know, in a baggie or a drawer of parts like this, it's going to be super easy to pick out the right color um, when I'm looking through. Whereas if you were dealing with, if you were dealing with, you know, let's say a part like, a part like this, a pin like this, and you had a bunch of different colors all mixed in, it could be a lot harder to find the color that you want, especially a number of the color that you want. So having things, you know, like this by color could be a lot more useful for you. So let's get these parts put away now. We've got uh, this part here is new. It doesn't have a drawer yet. So we're gonna put that in, in a new container. We'll put that over there. This part here, we already have a drawer that has the gray version of it. So for now, I'm gonna put the, the white ones in there and we can figure out later if that's a part that we'd rather have separate by color. And for these guys here, uh, these smaller drawers aren't really going to be a great fit for them. So what I will do is I'm going to use one of the larger Acro Mills drawers uh, to hold them for the time being. I don't know that we will have them in something this big at the end of the day, but you know, for now, it's a good place to kind of keep them all together um, so that we, you know, we know where they all are and then we can make decisions later about their final place in the, uh, in the storage system. So, you know, we've done a bunch of sorting here. I think this is a good place to, to stop for this first video. Uh, lots more, uh, lots more sorting and tips and tricks to come as we continue to move through our uh, collection here, sorting everything out and getting it stored away in our Acro Mills containers and our other plastic uh, containers that we have. I would love to hear if you've got uh, your own methods and tips and tricks for sorting, so feel free to post those in the comments below. Sorting tends to be a very personal thing for people, uh, lots of different Lots of different ways that people approach building with Lego, which tends to inform the way that you store and sort it. So, uh, you know, looking forward to reading some of the comments and hearing about different things that you might use in terms of equipment or, you know, strategies that you have. 
And if you have not subscribed to the channel, please make sure to do so, so that you don't miss out on any of our upcoming videos. And thank you very much for watching. We'll see you again soon. Take care. Bye.